We are the CS Capstone Group, the Rifters, and our project is Project Angelus. All right, so Project Angelus is a virtual reality first-person shooter wave survival game. Think Nazi zombies and Gears of War horde mode, um, but in the future, kind of. Uh, for the setting, the game takes place on a spaceship, which has come under assault. Um, you're playing as a soldier um, on the station who has to defend it for 50 waves. Um, it has a basic two-story level um, playing field with optional objectives placed throughout. Um, and the main objective is survival. We wanted to make a game that's compelling and fun, but at the same time our target audience is going to be gamers and developers um, who want to see more out of virtual reality than what is, it currently has to offer. Uh, I'm Kurt Steinke, I'm the T lead for the Rifters, I'm the AI uh, design lead, and I'm also the STEM integration lead. I'm Julia Olson, and I am the level design lead and art lead. Uh, I'm Noah Leiter, and I'm going to be playability, sound design, um, and the economy engineer. Yeah. I'm Sam Jonasi. I will be working on game mechanics, rendering, and I will be the scrum master. I'm Isaac Ebert. I'm going to be leading out combat mechanics and UI design. I'm Fernando Colon, and I'll be the VR implementation lead, as well as the lead tester. All right, so... One, the thing that sets our game apart is the fact that we are going to be using the Oculus Rift and the Sixth Sense STEM motion controllers in unison together. With an optional, op, uh, you can also use the Virtuix Omni if you have it with you. And um, our game will have the basic controls using mouse and keyboard, so that just in case they don't have anything, they can play with that, as well as uh, uh, support for the Xbox controller. All right, so the Rift, as you can see here, um, it has two stereographic projections for each eye so that you look at it into it and you, it makes you feel like you're there. Um, it has hardware within the Rift that lets you look around, up and down and stuff in a circular motion, and it also has a positional tracker that comes with it that you usually put on your monitor or somewhere else where it can like detect where your head is moving. All right. The STEM uh, is a piece of virtual reality hardware that basically gives your hand something to do. Uh, one problem that currently with first-person shooters using Oculus is obviously if you have something on your eyes, you can't you know, see your controller, and it feels very unnatural to use like, con the control sticks like you would normally on a, uh, on a gamepad. So what we're using is a, a very, very new technology called the STEM, and it's basically what the Wii was the Wii controllers for, that made by Nintendo were going to be, um, but they, they have full rotational um, uh, uh, tracking, positional tracking, and basically it will allow us for to have a very natural shooting and aiming for our game. The Virtuix Omni is a peripheral the users strap themselves above. Its input consists of foot movements. From here, the Omni is able to calculate the character's position along with the movement of the game. The Virtuix Omni has some difficulties associated with developing for it, mainly the fact that it doesn't support natural crouching or sitting and requires button inputs in order to do this, as well as the fact that natural video game movements such as strafing become a lot more difficult when you use the Omni. Right, let's go actually go back let's to go. the Oculus Rift demo with the stem. Um, this is just kind of to get a sense of Okay, here it is. It's coming up. This is kind of get, to get a sense of what you can do with the stem in a first-person shooter. Now, this is probably a lot more advanced than what we're going to be able to do. But you can see um, the person is able to, to get full down? to get full range of motion with their arm, and um, they use the ammo clips like as like a real item that they can pick up and push into their weapon. Let's see that in a second. Okay, um, but anyways, this is kind of like the advanced amount of virtual reality implementation that you can get. Okay, here we go. Yeah, he's putting the ammo in there. Um, but yeah, anyway, you can see the potential there for virtual reality. All right, let's move on. There we go. All right, so developing for VR, uh, the main obstacle that comes with that is motion sickness. And People can get motion sickness through VR through multiple different ways. It could be because they're not really good with, you know, 
moving around like in a roller coaster, for instance, you know, people who are not really good at roller coasters would not do well with an Oculus. Um, unnatural movements, as has been explained earlier, um, also doesn't work. It, for example, if you try to move your head towards a wall, you know, if you don't have a plan for that, like say darkening the screen, then your head would move to the wall, and then like that would make you motion sick. The software that we're going to use is obviously Windows and Mac OS X combined. We will be using Git as our version control system, and we will be using Drive as our primary source of information changing. The Unreal Engine is the one that we will be designing the game in, which uses C++ in conjunction with Microsoft Visual, Visual Studio. The Omni, the Oculus, and the Sixth Sense Stem all have their own SDKs, which we will be implementing and Blender will be used to create any assets which we cannot find or buy. Alright, uh, creating a game is, is a pretty big endeavor and to basically plan out all the different parts of it we split up the game into seven core components. They are uh, the core game mechanics, level design, AI design, art design, UI design, sound design, and story design. One of the main core mechanics of a game like this is going to be the combat system. So we're separating it out into two different categories. You have the melee and projectile weapons. With our melee weapons, you'll be able to use things like a, a, your fist, as well as energy weapons, such as a shield or a sword. The projectile weapons, we're going to be having traditional weapons, such as the type of things you would find in games like Call of Duty. And then we're also implementing the energy weapons, so that you would have your railgun or your laser weapons. We're also thinking about implementing unique weapons, so we would have something like a healing weapon or maybe even a joke weapon such as a banana gun. All the weapons, since you're using the stem for controls, will need to be one-handed and what we're going to do is have specific locations on the player's body for switching and reloading and things that you would need to do. The weapons will also be static in the world so you'll be able to set them down as in the video and then pick them back up and the ammo system we're using is a little bit unique we're going to, since we're doing an energy system all the weapons will use a combined ammo and we'll be able to pick it up from all weapons and use them universally the ui design is a very important feature in anything being used with the oculus rift the oculus is unable to to use HUD elements in traditional games as they cause disorientation. So what we are going to do is use holographic projections to display important information to the player. We're going to be having the health and things about the map projected onto the player's arm so that they can simply lift their arm and look at those to see what's going on. And then we will have the ammo and different information about the weapon projected directly behind the, the weapon itself. Um. So one of our big objectives of the game is going to be playability, and a good way to do that is to add in kind of a point system. Um, you know, nobody really wants to be an economist, um, you know, and, and run with all those formulas and stuff, but it is, it's been found to be very addictive to include a kind of ec economy system in a game. Um, and adding a point system is going to be important to maximize the playability so that players can earn points to, um, purchase weapons or upgrades, etc. And they can do this by defeating AI or completing waves. Um, and I have here kind of a formula. Well, this is just a, a very minimalistic graph of kind of what I want it to be. Um, so when, once you complete the first wave, you get X amount. And the second wave, you get X amount plus the next like percentage amount, which kind of decreases. And then once you beat 10 waves, you get an extra boost of, of money. Um, next slide. Level design is very important in order to immerse the player within the world and to keep everything consistent. Uh, what we're looking at is we're splitting it up into interactables and non-interactables. So interactables would be things like the blast doors that the user can repair or optional objectives that they can uh, repair or turn on and off for points. Uh, the non-interactables would be more things like sirens or crates for cover. Cover is a very important part of video games and ha requires a lot of play testing to get correct. Um, another aspect of this is the flow of the level. You never want the user to have to have hit a dead end, especially with the Omni and the Oculus combined. We want to make sure that they can go throughout circles and they never have to turn around in order to get to the next point. 
and AI design. So for our game, a, a large majority of it will be you know fighting the AI. The, the, the gameplay is driven by going through waves. So the, the AI's main goal is going to be to play the killer, uh, or kill the player, uh, as opposed to like uh, destroying an objective, um, like where the player just has to defend it. The AI is going to be actually hunting down the player. Now, uh, it does feature both friendly AI and enemy AI. Uh, um, there's, there's three tiers of the, the AI. Both friendly and, and the enemy AI share, share this division. So we basically have small, medium, and large. And these affect their weapon load, their default like weapon loadouts, um, their, their, their default health, uh, their speed, and just things like that. Um, we wanted to, we wanted to, because we're not supporting multiplayer with like other, other humans, we wanted to make it so you felt like you were actually like on a space station with other people, so it's not just, you know, you. So we're going to have friendly AI that's going to be fighting alongside you in the game. Uh, the, the, the AI, the friendly AI has two main modes, uh, sentinel mode, or which basically they sit in one spot and defend a position, or the player can uh, basically tell them to follow them and then they'll, they'll basically follow you around and they'll guard you. Um, uh, the enemy AI, uh, AI, we wanted to make them appear very smart, so they're gonna be in a squad-based system and uh, there's gonna be a squad leader in each squad. Uh, their main goal, again, is to kill, the, kill the, uh, the, the human player, but they have additional objectives that are throughout the level, such as like a power generator uh, that they can destroy, um, there's where the enemy AI is spawned in, usually there's a blast door that's stopping them from immediately coming in. An obje objective that they could do is destroy that to further help more, more of the uh, bad guys come in. Now, this is our scaling for AI has to do a lot with our, with our technical level design. As, as the waves progress through like 1 through 10, uh, basically the amount of enemies does not change. It's going to be roughly around 20. What does change is the uh, composition of of the enemies. So, say on level one, you're mostly going to have the, s the small guys, but say by the time you're at like level eight, nine, ten, mo majority of the people spawning are going to be the large guys, you know, rocket launchers and the heavy hitters. But every time you get to like the next set of ten, so like ways one through ten, eleven through twenty, it resets the composition. But difficulty multi multipliers are added to the game. So it's things such as damage, accuracy, health. For the art in the game, it's an animation. It's very important that the user feels consistent. So if they're using the stem and their hand is over here, then their hand needs to be right here within the game. It can't be over here. Otherwise, that also leads to motion sickness. The art style is very blue with a little bit of red. We want to keep the structure very simple so that the user has space to move, but we don't have to design a lot of extra uh, assets. And the characters and the weapons, what we're looking at is a modern high tech so that we can use the assets that have already been created and exist in the Unreal Store without having to create additional ones ourselves. Okay, sound design. Um, so this is one of the more over underrated parts and one of the more like underdeveloped parts in um, a lot of virtual reality experiences. Um, for the proper like sound design, we, we need to add in environmental effects like closing doors, opening doors, sirens, etc. And then we'll have like chatter of enemies and um, you know friendly AI will probably have their own dialogues. Um, but we also need to include music. We'll use probably mostly like already created music that's kind of free to use um, and doesn't have a license and etc. like that. But yeah, we want to really bring in the immersion factor with having a good level of sound design and really make it so the player won't get, you know, won't feel like they're in a different universe. The final part of immersion is the story design. While we realized the story isn't a, a very major part of what we're doing, we wanted to create a story that would give the player a connection to the environment that they're in. What we came up with was an overcrowding of Earth caused the people to try and find a new place to live. And there are two warring factions, the Samori and the Naxus, trying to fight over this planet. The Samori want all people equally to be able to move to this planet to escape the overcrowding. And the Naxus 
want to only let the wealthy move over to the new planet. In terms of software engineering, it is important that we be able to divide the tasks approximately equally among the semester, but at the same time, we can't really spend a lot of time and documentation on the management itself. Because of this, we have decided to center around testing along with having week-long scrums and one meeting per scrum in which we talk about the goals that we accomplished in the previous scrum, the goals we did not accomplish, and thus the goals that we need to add to the backlog, along with the goals that we need to get accomplished in the next week. With this, we should be able to divide the work as evenly as we can. Because of the fact that video games are completely centered around the user experience, we're going to be spending a lot of time in the virtual reality room playtesting. This needs to accomplish two goals. One goal is that our video game should never ever make the user nauseous. We also need to make sure that when a component is added to the video game, it does not cause it to crash in any way. And finally, we need to make sure that the video game in general is not only pleasant but fun to play. We have friends who may or may not be interested in helping us test this out. We cannot say in any official capacity that we are going to allocate a certain amount of time per week to third-party playtesting, but we will certainly keep the option open if they want to. Thank you for listening.